Hey guys, and welcome back to Medieval. When we last left off, we uh, helped King Peregrine uh, bring the castle down on top of the shadow demons, hopefully killing them once and for all. Hopefully. However, we did exit in a rather unique fashion in which we catapulted ourselves up and over the walls, which, in a roundabout kind of way, lands us here, randomly enough on the ghost ship don't question it just accept it so let's have a little look um kind of lukewarm on this mission i like it but it involves a lot of platforming and the platforming in this game is rather rubbish <laughs> poor dan can't catch a break Well, that was a bit of luck, to say the least. And we finally saw the worm sticking out of Dan's skull. That serves no purpose in this game. The ghost ship. Conventional wisdom says you shouldn't jump onto a giant ghost ship in the sky. However, it's still a safer air travel method than catapults. Yes. Uh, are you sure? I mean, at least with a catapult, you know what you're going to get. You're going to get a horrible, painful, squishy, pulpy ending. With a ghost ship, anything's possible. But there she is. The majestic, magnificent ghost ship herself. Yep, this mission is a platforming nightmare. Uh, which would be okay if the platforming in this game was good. It is not good. Captain, I thought you ought to know we have a stowaway on board. I told the men to scour the decks for me. Good! I want that scurvy dog dangling from yon yard arm by his bowels! Is that really necessary? Mm -hmm. Couldn't we just give him a good tongue lashing and drop him off at the next port? Look! There's not a man jack on this ship who wouldn't kill Hall his own grandmother for the silver in her hair! Oof. There'll be no tongue lashing! Bring the landlubber to me and I'll tear him a new artist! Is that so meat? I don't think so. Right, Dan. Let's go, buddy. Let's equip our sword. Uh, actually, let's have that there. Mm, yeah, we'll roll with that for now. All right, let's have a little read. Most of the crew seems to be under the control of a few officers. Without them, they'd be like headless chickens. Quite. So, just like uh, our narrator friend here says, if we kill these skeletons, sadly, they will just continuously respawn and come back to bite us in the ass. But old Dan ain't too worried about that. They are fairly weak in health, but they do a heck of a lot of damage. But if we kill these officers, the whole squad dies. So, bear that in mind. Alright, Dan. Not bad. We've got the moon rune. Let's go lock that in and keep going. Ooh, hello, there's another officer here. Quickly, Dan! Take the leader! Cut the head off the snake, and the body will die. Just like that. Alright, now, this level is bloody challenging at times. Just because of the platforming, if you fall, there's a lot of areas in this game where if you fall, um, you will lose an entire life bottle. And as we don't have a full complement of life bottles, that is quite fiddly. Ah, looks like we've got more of these buggers here. We can't do nothing about them. Just oh, you jackass. That's fine. That's what happens if you fall down one of the many holes. You end up in the hole. Which in itself ain't too bad. I don't know why I'm fighting these guys. There really is no point. We don't even get any souls. 
Ah, God damn it! Right, so if we've fallen down, that means we've got to go all the way back through the ship. Ouch! Oh yeah, and rolly barrels as well, because they're fun. Um, let's see if we can get this health vial. Okay. Ah, oh, son of a... Yeah, you know what? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Ooh, yeah. Oof, Jesus Christ. That's fine. Ah. I have to do a lot of delicate um, quick stepping around here. If Dan would stop getting stuck in the scenery, that would also help. Yeah, the, the lack of polish does hurt this level fairly significantly in places. But it's okay. We shall persevere. Right, what have we got below us, Dan? Looks like we've got a squad of undead. Well, let's go take out the captain as always. Get out of here, sir. It's quite enough of you. And we already have half of the souls needed for the chalice. Most excellent. Ah, right. Let's continue starboard. Ooh, we have cannons. Unfortunately, if we get hit by one of these cannons, not only does it hurt... There's a bloody good chance it's gonna blow us off the uh, off the side of the ship, and that is not a good time. That is a whole health bottle wasted. Ah, right, this is my least favourite part because this is where it gets really difficult because of how floaty and stiff the controls are. But we want to go down anyway, so let's just drop for now. All right, Dan. Let's kill these guys. Leave none surviving. No prisoners today, Dan. We're going to purge the evil from this ship once and for all. Now these cannonballs. Yes, these cannonballs. You can use your shield to block them. But as you just saw there, uh, very rarely does your shield actually protect you. There is a bit of a glitch when it comes to the hit detection on these cannonballs. Nine times out of ten, even if you use your shield, like so, it either won't do any damage to you, or like there, it will, um, even when you have your shield raised, it will still do damage. So, yeah, not, not really a fan of the uh, programming when it comes to the hit detection on that bit. It's really ropey. Anyway, Dan, let's have some fun, shall we? Now, the trouble is, it's really freaking hard to see where Dan is bouncing to. Also, there is a load of invisible walls there that will knock you back down to the beginning because of this game's lack of polish. Now, like you say, the, pol the lack of polish doesn't really ruin the game, per se. I won't go that far. But it shouldn't really be as uh, prominent as it is. Okay, once more we're feeling. Now, every time you fall down there, you've got to rephrase these steps all the bloody way. There we go. Yeah, so doing the daring dash should make you invincible. Because anything that hits you should hit the shield. But it doesn't work that way. Also, this really illustrates just... Yeah, look at that. We just got hit by two cannonballs, which we should not have been hit by. And we've really taken uh, a lot of health damage here. Uh, yeah, you can also see just how weak the magic, quote, magic shield is. It's really not fantastic. Right, okay, there we go. Now, getting through this hole on the bridge is that... Oh, fucking hell. That is where the difficulty comes in. That is so hard to thread that needle. But we persevered. Now we have cannon ports. Um, yeah, they do go down after a while. I thought they did. Come on, midges. There we go. Nice. Ah, now that will give us a nice little sippy sippy of health, which we really bloody need, let's be honest. Now the hard battle is just about to start. Let's top up as much juice as we can. Not bad. It would have been nice if we had a little bit more, but 
Beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Okay. Oh, God. Yeah, not good. Not good at all. I think we have to destroy a percentage of these guys. Yeah, and then that blows open. I got ya. Now, Dan, whale on the captain. Ah, jeez, Louise, big papa cheese. Oh, there's... Who are you? Are you a captain? I don't know. But you should have died. But you did not die. Curious. The ghost ship captain is as tough as old sea boots. You will need something a little more powerful than the weapons in your inventory to knock him overboard. Yes, this boss, should we say, on this mission is quite the challenge because of how he's set up. You cannot hit him with your weapons, which is bad. You have to take him out with a cannon, which is good. But at the same time, he has scurvy sea dogs blasting away at you, which is bad. So there's the chalice, and the chalice is not quite filled with souls just yet. Let's see if we can fill it up. Ah, there is a captain here. Cool. Damn you. No, we really didn't want to do that. Come here, you little bastard. Right, now we can go get the chalice, which is cool. And then we should be able to make a hasty exit. You know, this is another really short level. Loads of these levels are way shorter than I actually realized which is okay because for the purpose of recording it makes it easier but um, I can't actually think of a downside to that actually <laughs> yes for the purpose of recording it makes them way easier but um, there, there is no but I guess right one problem we're really Kinda of low on health, actually. Um, we only have 11 drumsticks left, but I mean, I suppose 11 drumsticks is better than none. It'll give us a little bit of health, but we do want to keep one. Yeah, that's literally filling us up by nothing. I don't think we can actually use these uh, drumsticks on these um, skeletons either. Although I might be wrong. Well, we definitely can't use them on these skeletons because these are special boss skeletons. But we shall endeavor to try our best. Now, the best thing to do here, what the game wants you to use is a flaming club. But we're going to be smarter than that. We're going to use the cannon. Uh, we're going to use the dragon vial, I should say. It's also can be quite difficult to light the cannon. But we're not going to worry about that. We're just going to keep going. Persevere, Dan. Persevere. Come on, Dan. You can see how much health these guys are draining us by. Oh, God. Okay, that actually... Oh, God, you dick. Come on. Come on. There we go. He's literally throwing everything at us. Including the kitchen sink. Oh, nice. He's down to 100 health. Which is good. Come on, Dan. There we go. One more good shot and he's had it. Fire, Dan. Got him. Ugh, we actually did that surprisingly well. Dare I say it? Ah, and there's the fresh club. Now I'm going to have to go and grind out health after this mission for sure. Let's get out of here. Chalice in hand. Not bad, Dan. Not bad. Actually, depending on how long this takes, I might leave this as its own video. Because we still have some book entries to read. Um, right. Do we want to buy anything? I don't think we really used anything, did we? No, we did not. 18 chalices, guys. 18 chalices. Now, uh, there isn't actually 18 heroes here. There we go. Let's mess the place up. Just because we can, really. Even if Dan failed at this point. And uh, that was it. And he was slain. I still think he deserves to be part of the 
hall of heroes. I mean, man, he's accomplished quite a bloody bit. Let's be fair. Ah, hey, buddy. You are back here for the skill. I think this is because of my shield, yeah. But I have something else I can. The give shield's you. not bad. Something you may find very interesting. Go on. Please be a life bottle. It should be a life ball. No, it's gold. Ugh, which means I am going to have to go and grind our health back. Well, thanks for nothing, pal. Uh, I really wish there was like a life fountain or some easier way of filling your health up. Oh. Um. Okay, that was weird. Is there any... Why was there a random container of gold there? That was really odd. If there's any more gold anywhere in this place. I mean, I'm not complaining. More gold is better than less gold. Especially if uh, as that is the only reward that we're going to get today. Gold is not great. Let's be honest. I'd prefer like a health bottle or something. But hey, we'll take what we can get. And... We forgot to read the um, the book again, didn't we? Because of course we did. But that does lead us nicely to the entrance hall. The second to last mission in the game. But now we have to go all the bloody way back to top up our health. Which is really annoying, just because of how slow this map actually uh, transitions. Now, I do like this map. I love games where you get an overarching map like this. I really do. But when you're trying to... yeah, And when you misclick like that, you have to wait for this really un long, unskippable um, animation to play out. Which is not great. <laughs> So we're going to go to Dan's Crypt, we're going to go get some life, and we're going to listen to the book. Hmm, 17 minutes. It's not a very lengthy video, is it? Um, walk up to a book and push triangle to read it. Yeah, when the game actually allows you to read the book. That's some health. Might as well collect all of the treasure whilst we're here, because why not? Yeah, this was a bit of a missed opportunity as well, I feel. I think there should be a gargoyle here that you can buy stuff from. They should have made um, Dan's crypt a little bit more of like a central, central important-ish hub area. If you could come back here and go shopping and that sort of thing, that would have been really nice. Because you can come back here whenever you want, and it's kind of like its own little tutorial bit-ish. Just would have been nice if there was more here to come back to. Right, let's have a little look at our book. The Book of Galomir. The Vulture. Ah, that's the last friendly. Birds only like one person in their life. For some reason, this one likes Dan. Uh this scavenger saw a corpse meal and instead found a friend. What a lovely way to meet. Aww. Oops, ain't that cute. Enemies. Should be a few here now. Ooh, there's only three enemies left. Ah, the Jabberwocky. Um. Is this still bugged? Yeah. There is no narration for the Jabberwocky. Hmm. Many years ago, the foolish sorcerer Mazok and uh, the muz uh, the muddled what came into uh, into possession of a dragon egg. At the same time, Galomir was suffering under a terrible famine, and Mazok had been ordered by his king to seek out a magical solution. If only the kingdom's scrawny chickens could lay eggs the size of a dragon egg, thought Mazok, and he set about applying his questionable skills to transform the egg. Several days later, the kingdom had been saved. 
the hatched chicken dragon, or Jabberwocky, as it came to be known, possessed the ferocity of a dragon and the dim wit of a chicken. It rampaged through the kingdom on a murderous spree and killed so many that even the meager harvest was enough to sustain the survivors as they mourned their loved ones. Oh man, Galloway's, Galloway is such a terrible place to live. The Jabberwocky was finally chased from the land by the hero Dirk Steadfast, who poked it with his magic sword. Ideal. Well, he didn't fell the beast, but he poked it. Okay, not sure why there's no narration for this entry again. It's just such a strange lack of polish. Did they forget? Is it bugged? I don't know, man. Could they not afford to pay Alana? I think her name is. Ah. These are spineless sea dogs with a penchant for plundering. They never complain, even when cleaning the poop deck. Obedient to a fault, they won't even revive themselves unless commanded to. Right, so, where were we? Ah, yes. The voice actor, Lani. Yes, yes. What did I say? Lana. Yeah, I think she's called Lani. She's awesome. She's in, like, loads of stuff as well. Um, pirate officers. The pirate captain's right-hand men, despite their lack of right hands. Their main qualification being of no discernible threat to the cat. <laughs> well then. Yeah, Tom Baker was the original uh, voice actor for the narration in um, the previous medieval games. So, interesting to see that really they changed. Is it possible to be a ghost, a skeleton, and a pirate? Yes. Not only that, but this Halloween trifecta is so fearsome that he was promoted to captain after just a single mutiny. <laughs> The other pirates look up to him. Well, he is twice their size. Fair. Fair. I can understand that. Well, we're on 22 minutes, so I think we shall leave this as its own thing for now. So, yeah. Um, also, the voice actor for Dan is the same. Um, in fact, they uh, used the original voices, from what I can understand. The, most of the voice samples from um, the originals just remastered them and then they added some new ones in as well i was just reading up about the voice acting in this game as well apparently it was recorded with um the voice actor actually wearing a bucket on his head which i think is pretty bloody funny actually uh nice little bit of attention to detail there now this game actually got really really quite mm, uh, like Mediocrely, really. Medical? Yeah, got medical reviews. Um, I don't think that's fair. I mean, this game is not perfect by any stretch of the imagination. And out of the the main remakes we got, you know, Crash Bandicoot and uh, Spyro, just to think of a few off the top of my head. This one's definitely the weakest one. But at the same time, it's really faithful. If they did strip out the combat system uh, and put a whole new combat system in, it wouldn't really be the same game, wouldn't have the same feeling. The difference with Spyro and Crash was their mechanics were already pretty solid. I mean, Crash, they, I guess, arguably changed too much because I can't really get on with the remakes. Um, funny enough, actually, playing the remake of Crash Bandicoot um, kind of reinforced the fact that I'm just not that keen on the Crash formula. Um, whereas playing the remakes of Spyro <laughs> reinforced just how much I like Spyro. Spyro is definitely the strongest out of those for me personally. I do like Crash. I'm just not a super fan. Um, don't like the ridiculous difficulty spikes in the gameplay. But um, as I say, they, they were really faithful, but they had a really solid base. This game just hasn't aged very well. And they were, yeah, maybe a little bit too faithful in copying Dan's combat and uh, movement. But then, as I said... If they replaced that with something modern that worked, uh, would you then have lost the original feeling? Maybe. 
Yeah, maybe. It wouldn't really have that medieval feel. I think if they want to drastically overhaul and improve what's here, just make a new game. I think that's the best way to do it. Anyway, I'm waffling, so thank you very much for watching, guys. And as always, till next time.